All right. Well, our top story here in New York today and across the country. Yeah. Two former members of President Trump's inner circle taken a big legal hit yesterday. Former campaign chairman Paul Manafort guilty on eight counts of tax and bank fraud. And the president's former personal lawyer Michael Cohen pleading guilty to charges stemming from hush money payments to two women alleging affairs with the president. What he did was he worked to pay money to silence two women who had information that he believed would be detrimental to the 2016 campaign. Mr. Cohen uh, sought reimbursement uh, for that money by submitting info, invoices to the candidate's company, which were untrue and false. So what does this all mean for the president? Let's bring in criminal defense attorney Vinu Varghese. It's great to have you here, Vinu. So many questions for you, sir. Good morning. I want to start with, again, that question. What does the Michael Cohen case mean for President Trump? I mean, look, he basically described himself as the president's fixer. He made both payments for the purpose of, and this is his quote yesterday in court, for the purpose of influencing the election and acted at the direction of the candidate. He did plead guilty to campaign finance violations, but does that bleed over? Does that affect President Trump? Well, yes. I mean, he said Michael Cohen, Trump's lawyer, said in court that then-candidate Trump, without naming him, um, directed him to make these payments to the porn star and to the Playboy model. So what he's done is in open court, under oath, has said that the then-candidate Trump, Mr. Trump, uh, engaged with him to commit a federal crime. So in essence, Trump is is um, the one named as a as a person who is involved in this crime well lady davis uh who is michael cohen's attorney was it was appearing a, a, a several platforms yesterday and and his question was if those payments were a crime for michael cohen then why wouldn't they be a crime for donald trump but donald trump is the president of the united states and has insulation correct to an extent, uh, well, it's that's debatable. There is a DOJ memo that uh, says that you don't indict a sitting president, and and Special Counsel Mueller it will abide by that. But that doesn't prevent impeachment. That doesn't prevent the report being issued to Congress, and then it's up to Congress to decide what it wants to do. And it also doesn't protect. President Trump, once he leaves office from being prosecuted for these no, crimes. That's interesting. Well, I think we're getting a little bit of a taste of what uh, is to come from Rudy Giuliani, who is representing the president now. I want you to listen to what he said back on May 2nd when he was talking to Sean Hannity. Having something to do with paying some Stormy Daniels woman 130000 I mean, which is going to turn out to be perfectly legal. That money was not campaign money. Sorry, I'm giving you a fact now that you don't know. It's not campaign money. No campaign finance violation. But yet, Vanu, Cohen pled guilty to campaign finance violations yesterday. So, so which is it? Look, that's a great... Uh, I got to give Rudy credit. He is waging a war in the court of public opinion. And as his lawyer, as Tr President Trump's lawyer, that's what he's supposed to do. A lot of people don't like it. But the reality is, is that the acts for which Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to, to which he allocated in court, constitute crimes. So those payments were for the purposes of influencing the election. And those were Cohen's own words. And I don't believe the U.S. Attorney's Office would have brought this case or a judge accepted this plea if that weren't the case. All right. Real quick, I do want to ask you for a quick comment on Paul Manafort, of course, the former uh, Trump campaign uh, manager. Uh, he, of course, was uh, convicted. Eight counts, ten counts uh, were mistrials, uh, but a split decision from the jury. What is the next steps for that case? And I know that obviously there's going to be an appeal, but where do you see kind of that case going for Paul Manafort? Well, Paul Manafort's team took a big gamble because they could have had this part of the trial combined with the upcoming trial in D.C., but they chose to try this case in Alexandria, Virginia, where they'd have a more, where they believe they'd have a more favorable jury pool. It didn't work out. The gamble has, didn't pay off, and he was convicted on eight counts. That's leading to a case in D.C. This is a lot of time that Paul Manafort's looking at. Mm. A lot, a lot of time. Wow. So it increases the possibility that he will cooperate. Gosh. Oh, well, that's interesting as well. There's, well it's all going to unfold, I'm sure, very soon. Benivar Gacy, it's great to have you here, Sue, uh, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. All right.